In this week's vlog, it's time to leave the cold and canal, but not without getting down to some unfinished business first. And later, I'm reminded once again why mindfulness is so important to me. I've been on this canal for over a month, a month and a week, nearly really six weeks, I think. Oh, I love the cold and canal. I'd love to come back. I'm gonna to have to come back because I didn't get to Froggle. So that's a good excuse to come back and get to the very end of the navigation. But this is the end of the leak branch, which helps to feed the Colden Canal and the Trenton Mersey via these channels, which lead back to the Rajard Reservoir. The Rajard Lake is where Rajard Kipling's parents met and fell in love, which is where he got his name from. But the engineering doesn't stop there, however, as Rudyard Lake is also fed by the River Dane, and I found this gorgeous old photo of that very river. <sighs> let's go. I don't want to leave the Golden Canal, but let's go. Oh. Oh. Let's go. Alice Grace is facing the wrong way round, so the first thing to do is to wind her in the winding hole, which has the space for a 70 foot narrowboat to turn, so Alice Grace, only being 60 foot, should have no problems doing this. Then it's all about getting to the beginning of the Colden Canal. But before I get to Aturia, I have to stop and try and reclaim something that belongs to me. The towpaths on this canal have been amazing. You walk on them, you don't wade in them. Uh, the views are incredible, the history and architecture, the nature and the pubs have been so friendly and the food's been really good in them. I mean, overall, I really love the Colden Canal and I totally recommend it. But my life is about traveling on. And even though I'm sure one day I'll stay somewhere forever, that time isn't now. I'm nearly back to the place I started six weeks ago, but there's something to do first. Nearly at the bridge where we lost the chimney. So the magnet's ready in the front. And as soon as we get to the bridge, I'm gonna to go to the front and I'm gonna dangle the magnet in and hopefully find our chimney, the first one. That's the first challenge today. We're about two miles from Aturia and we've made good time today. It's the bridge before these bottle kilns because looking at the bottle kilns with their big chimneys after I just lost the chimney on Alice Grace really rubbed salt into the wounds. So it's the, yes, here it is. Okay, place your bets now. Do you think I'm actually going to find it? I always worry when I put the magnet in that I'm going to find an unexploded bomb. Prepare the magnet. Slowing right down now on approach. Okay, I am just looking over the edge. Uh, yeah. uh, last time I came through, I, I, my chimney knocked off, so I've got a magnet. I'm trying to find the chimney. Uh, I found this chimney as well. Did you? Oh, did you? It's not ideal to magnet fish off the side of a steel boat. And I'm really worried that the only thing I'm going to catch today is Alice Grace. No, no. It's got something. I've got something. I don't know. Oh. Oh, yeah, I've 
I've got something. I think that's it. Might be a shark. <laughs> oh, I'm coming through. <laughs> It's looking, it's letting go of it. Probably stuck. I think it's stuck in the sand. Yeah, it is. I'm trying to fall in the water. Yeah, I don't want to fall in the water. Very experienced. Well, not really. <laughs> I wouldn't have lost my chimney <laughs> if I was in spirit. Well, oh. We do these things, don't we? Yeah. First catch of the day is some sort of rusty old handle. What's <laughs> that? <laughs> oh my gosh, I've got something. I've got something. Oh, I can't. Oh, what is it? It's really. Oh! It's gone. I keep searching whilst having a wonderful chat with this lady and her son. If you know of a small narrowboat with a local mooring to Stoke for sale, please get in contact because this lady really misses living on a boat and it would be so lovely if she could fulfill her life's dream of returning to the water. That's what we got. And no chimney. What a spectacular way to finish, to finish the Colden Adventures. into the staircase lock and then we're at Aturia where our Colden adventures began. Okay at the staircase lock. Look at Stoke. It's so pretty. to the Colden Canal in the winter and we've come out in the spring. day two today we're going to go onto the Trent and Mersey Canal we're going to get some fuel and it's a bit of a mix-up day it's almost like it's shining with rain and pouring with sun it's not it is like that but let's do this let's get onto the Trent and Mersey oh, goodbye to the Colden Canal big thank you Mr Brindley because even though Mr Brindley didn't get to see his canal it's a wonderful canal Bye-bye, doggy. Gorgeous Doberman. What a gorgeous dog. Yeah, I know. We leave Aturia Junction behind us and we move on. First of all, to stop at Stoke Boats to get fuel, gas and kindling and all sorts. And then to continue on, not far today, past the potteries and to a place called Westport Lake. Everything suddenly seems so big. Apart from the ducks of course, they're just normal duck size. It 
It's £1.20 per litre for diesel at Stoke Marina and we need about 150 litres so I'm just going to try and work this out. 10% plus 10%, so 10% of that is £15 plus £15. Pounds. It will be a very long video if I showed you how long it actually took me to add the diesel plus the gas plus the wood plus the kindling plus the new shiny exciting canal guide. So here's the receipt instead. Fuel tank is full. The kindling basket is full. The log basket is full. And we have a book full of adventures to explore. So there's a little arm here. It doesn't go anywhere now, but it would have done. It's called Pebble Mill Arm, so there must have been a pebble mill here at some point. But this area was mainly overshadowed by the Shelton Blast Furnaces, which looked like this. Steel production ended here in 1978, but still was still being processed until 2002. I'm really interested to see how different each of those potteries pottery was. Obviously I've explored Wedgwood but I don't know what the Newport or Middleport's pottery looked like so yeah I'm really interested about that. So I went to visit Middleport's museum and I found out that they make burley ware here and it's the last pottery in the world still using the traditional skill of underglazed tissue printing which dates back 200 years. But stepping inside the bottle kiln was just something else. I just couldn't get my head round that men used to work in these kilns throughout the firing process. High temperatures caused lung and eye diseases and there was a high risk of burns. In fact the average age of a worker here was 48 years. I also couldn't get my head around the fact that Zephyr met a dog that looked more like Zephyr than Zephyr does herself. Longport Pottery was the first of the potteries to come along in 1773 and it was owned by the Davenport family who made Davenport ware and later Unicorn Pottery was made here. When all the kilns were fired up in this area, those on the streets would have to use the curbs to find their way home because they couldn't even see their own hands in front of their faces. Still on the winter mooring rules at the moment. They will change at the end of March. That means that we can moor in a place for two weeks. And then when it changes, different mooring spots have different sort of lengths depending where they are. Yeah, this looks really pretty. There's gonna be lots of walks here, Zeph. When I said that to Zephyr, I didn't realise that walking was gonna play a really big part in help me try to get to grips with some sad news that I've had this week. Um, I lost a friend that I've known since the age of four, just two days separated our birthdays. And I've found that 
staring at the tiny things that I've found along the way whilst I'm walking has really helped me just try to escape for a while so I feel more able to cope and manage the sadness. We were four when we met, by the legs of our mothers. Her hair was the colour of rising sun. While they nattered, we set our eyes on each other, then smiled, our friendship like that had begun. She was wren-like in size, and she flitted and skipped, while we played side by side, day by day as we grew. But the spirit and grit in those sparkling eyes was eagle in strength. No one stronger I knew. And the trees have been fruitful, then bare in their resting, a score in years since the last laugh we shared. And we've busied ourselves with the tests manifesting from life, separately, but never unpaired. Now a ladybird clasps to the grass as the wind blows, freckled and red, so determined it climbs. And I remember our games, our highs and our lows, and how she was there through all of those times. Memories like seeds on the bulrush, so many, they lift and they rise as the rush head sways, and they carry me back to the years spent with Jenny, side by side, day by day, now cherished always. <laughs> 